Okay, yeah, so um, we are so excited to be here. Um, as Shelby said, I'm Nancy Duncan with Charity Navigator and my colleague Yesenia is, uh, has joined me as well. Um, I've been with Charity Navigator for um, almost a year. January will be a year, so um, still uh, a lot to learn uh, for myself. And um, so, and Yesenia will help kind of fill in the gaps as well. So I'm going to ask her just to please chime in at, at any point. Um, but let me start by asking um, you a question, um, and uh, you can do this by just physically raising your hand or using an emoji. Um, how many of you have heard of Char Charity Navigator before? No? Okay. Well, good. So we're excited to be here to have this opportunity to tell you a little bit about um, who we are and, and, um, and what we do and how we might be able to help you connect with um, that career that you're looking for. So who are we? Um, we are um, a, a nonprofit. So we're a 5013C. Um, in the industry that's uh, led by a small team, um, small but mighty, we like to say. We only have about 35 staff members. Um, and we all are just very passionate about philanthropic um, uh, uh, people and, and the technology and are dedicated um, to helping um, donors find the right places where they want to give. Um, we are based out of New Jersey. However, we are fully remote. Um, and are currently have staff in over 15 states. So um, we are kind of spread out throughout the US. We went remote at the time of the pandemic and have, have uh, found that we're very efficient that way and have stayed. Um, so what do we do? Um, we are really um, driven to turn intent into action. And that means something for lots of different people. We serve nonprofits. Um, to be able to if you look at our website, we empower donors to find and support the charities that align with their passion. So we want to provide um, donors and connect them with the nonprofits that they would like to give to. And so we want to provide really good information um, so that donors know, um, you know, about the nonprofits. And we're going to go through the information we provide. Um, so we do that on about 200,000 charities. Um, you can put in comments, any idea how many charities are out there in the U.S.? Anyone? Okay, so there's over 1.5 million charities registered in the U.S. alone. So um, loads of nonprofits. Um, we, you know, our job is to uh, get to more nonprofits and, and provide more information. Um, but currently we do provide data on over 200,000 um, nonprofits. Um, so what is our why? Um, we wanna make impactful giving easier for all. So let me just take a moment and show you this video. Um, that'll explain it a little better. Okay, oh my. You're not hearing that, are you? No. Um, you might have to. Did you click share sound when you um, shared your screen? OK, let me look. Um, I can't get back to. If you stop sharing and then share it again. Yeah. Do that. OK, <laughs> let's see here. Um, it's at like the bottom corner when you click share screen. Okay, now I have to find, okay, so let's try this again. Sorry about that. You want to make a positive change that in the world, yep, that but works. figuring out where to give that's going to make the biggest difference can often be challenging. That's why millions of donors use Charity Navigator. We provide you with the tools and knowledge to find and support the charities that align best with your values and passions, all at no cost. We rate hundreds of thousands of charities on a zero to four star scale so that you can identify the most effective organizations working in the cause areas you care most about. Additionally, our alerts make you aware of reported and confirmed misconduct at charities or those pretending to be charities to help inform your giving. 
We also curate lists of nonprofits responding to crises so that you can confidently support a vetted charity providing relief and recovery. And our safe and secure giving basket empowers you to support multiple organizations in one convenient checkout, all while controlling how much information you share with each charity. So whether you plan to give money, time, expertise, or material goods, Charity Navigator is your destination for impactful giving. Visit Charity Navigator today and make the change you want to okay. see. Visit Interestingly enough, I couldn't hear it, today. so hopefully all of you were able to hear that. Um, all right, so that's our why. And then I um, want to walk through um, our rating system. So when I said that we provide data to donors, we really, um, that is what our mission is, is to ensure that when you are looking to um, whether you're looking for employment opportunities or you're looking for volunteer opportunities or you're looking to donate your hard-earned money and you want to connect with a, a, an organization that you know is using that money for good, um, we, um, we've been around for over 20 years. For um, the longest time, we looked at um, mostly the financial information and really realize that donors um, are demanding more information and they want a real, a holistic um, vision of a nonprofit. And so we have um, uh, a four beacon system where we are providing um, more information about nonprofits. Um, and we're gonna, um, Yaseni's gonna take you through our website um, once I get through just kind of giving you the overview so that you can see where to find this information. Um, but basically, we start by looking at impact and results. So that's super important. Is the organization doing what they say they're going to do? If they're going to feed, um, you know, uh, the homeless, are they actually doing that? What are those metrics? And so we have a team of impact analysts that um, look at uh, the methodologies for how to uh, rate that and measure that. And not only is that organization doing what they say they're going to do, are they doing it in a financially fiscal and responsible way? So are they efficient at what they're doing? So that's one of our ratings. Our next rating is accountability and finance. And that's um, been something that we have um, that's been around forever. Um, there's a lot of public information. Um, there's something called a 990. Um, so if you work a job, and you have to file your taxes, you get your W-4 and you file your taxes. A nonprofit obviously doesn't pay taxes, but we have to file information with the IRS that says, here's how much money we raised, here's how much money we spent, and here's how we spent that money. Did we spend it mostly on programs or did we spend it all on salaries and or or maybe um, there's other categories that you can look at. Where did our funding come from? Are we funded by grants? Are we funded by individual donors? So it breaks it up and gives you a lot of financial information about an organization. So Charity Navigator does that work for you because those, those forms can be really complicated to look at and evaluate. Um, so we do it for you um, and we have an evaluation. We look at the spending. We also look at things like, does the organization have a whistleblower policy? That's like super important to have because you want people to be able to anonymously um, report if there's um, wrongdoings going on. So um, do they have an independent board? So, um, you know, are they not non-paid members with at least three board members that kind of oversee the organization? So those are some uh, accountability and finance things that we'll look at and we'll report on um, and do that for you. Um, the next thing is culture and community. And this is super important. And I think um, in, in those that are going out and looking for jobs today, I would, I know that when I look, um, was looking for something, um, it was super important. Um, our culture and community is a lot of things. It's looking at HR practices. So of course, that's going to be important to me. But it's also looking at DEI, um, so diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, are, is the organization fostering a culture um, of inclusiveness? Um, and some things that our evaluators look at here, um, they look at a survey that's done and we get the data and it asks things like, does the organization review compensation for equity? Um, so what that means is that um, people who do similar jobs across the organization 
um, no matter their background? Are they getting paid similarly? Is there a, a compensation structure that provides that, um, that, that equity? Um, they're looking at racial disparities in programs um, at the people the organization is serving. Um, are they doing that in an equitable way? And then really looking at the long-term goals for creating an inclusive culture. So, um, you know, again, I, I feel like this is a really important way. Charity Navigator has started um, looking at this um, and we will give a rating, but I also would encourage you to go to the website of organizations you're looking to. Is there a DEI statement on their career page? Look at the wording in the job descriptions. Is it inclusive? Um, is it somewhere that, um, you know, does, does it look and feel like somewhere uh, you'd want to work? Um, do they uh, list their board members? Is there a diverse board? Um, so all those things are things that I think that you could be looking for to make sure they align with um, what you want in an organization. And then our final um, beacon is leadership and adaptability. And again, this is something we just started broaching the work on. So we've got a lot more work to do here. But basically, it tells about the mission and vision of an organization. So we talked about what organization do you want to work with? What kind of mission do you want to be aligned with? What are you passionate about? Um, and the, the leadership um, and adaptability beacon basically asks, does your organization have a mission and a vision and strategic goals that align with that? Um, so some of the things that you'd be looking for here is, does this align with your own values? Do you see those values throughout their website and throughout their interview process? Um, is it something that you're passionate about? Um, I'm going to be super honest and share with you um, and, and don't, hang, don't uh, disconnect me, but I'm terrified of animals. And so working for um, the SPCA might not be something that I'd be comfortable doing. Um, although I think, you know, uh, helping animals is a great cause. It's just not something I could do because I'm terrified. Um, but is there something that really aligns with me and speaks to me? Um, and at Charity Navigator, what I love about our mission is we're providing data and information for an entire sector. So I'm not just helping um, one particular mission, we're actually supporting um, the entire nonprofit industry to be able to raise funds and do the good work that they do. Um, the other thing the leadership and adaptability ask is about investment in staff. You're just starting your career out. So you wanna be somewhere where the organization is gonna invest in you. So even if it's not clear on a website, that would be an interview question you might wanna ask. Um, you know, if I don't have a particular skill set, what is your uh, policy or plan for supporting me on continuing my learning? Do you have a mentorship program? Um, you know, and all these things aren't always well defined in smaller nonprofits because there's limited resources, um, but at least be asking the questions and know where they stand. So when you go into your career, you know what you're going to, to be um, getting at that particular organization. Um, so there are many other resources that are on our website as you go through um, our uh, Charity Navigator, and we're going to um, go to that in just a second. Um, there's an advisory section. So basically, Charity Navigator um, has a, a team of folks that are looking at any reported or confirmed misconducts at charities. So they're constantly scouring um, the news and news sites. They're constantly looking at all the different resources that they have available to them to find out, um, is there anything going on that donors should know about? And so we do that work for donors um, and, and job seekers. <laughs> um, we have a giving basket. So um, the giving and basket empowers you to support multiple charities. So if you have a cause that you are looking for, uh, to support, um, you can bring that up and it will bring up the nonprofits that um, are, are, have scored really high in our rating system um, and are the kind of the, the best in class um, and will allow you to give your dollars and it'll, um, it'll allocate them across the board to, to those nonprofits. And then also on our website is the ability to volunteer. So um, there is a section where if you're looking for volunteer opportunities, um, you can find that on our site as well. So with that, um, I am going to turn this over to Yesenia. 
Um, she is Associate Program Analyst and has been with the organization for over a year um, and actually used Charity Navigator's site when she was searching for her own employment. So let me stop sharing my screen. And Yesenia, if you want to take over and share, she's going to go through the website. There we go. And we are super excited. This is such an exciting week for Charity Navigator. Um, you are one of the first people to see our brand new launched uh, new branding website um, with lots of search features. And so it has been a monumental and exciting week for us. Um, so uh, if, if we look tired, <laughs> it's because it's been a, a long week in getting this done. Um, but uh, so Yesenia, let me uh, turn this over to you. Great, thanks, Nancy. Um, everyone can see my screen, right? With the website, fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, uh, it's a very exciting week for us. Um, we just debuted our brand new website uh, with a whole bunch of brand new features that um, are really going to showcase exactly uh, what makes Charity Navigator so important uh, for users and other professionals in the sector. Uh, we really are looking forward to to um, teaching more people more people about our beacons and and how we really use um, the data that we get uh, from from site users from nonprofits to to provide them with a really great with with, with ratings and provide more information for users um, about the causes and 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 what they're really passionate about so um, a little bit about me uh, I actually went um, I went to school for my degree in public and nonprofit administration at Rutgers, uh, Newark. Um, from the beginning, I've always known that I was very passionate about helping people and I was really interested in working in the nonprofit sector. Um, and one of the most interesting things I learned um, at school, besides all the things you should be learning is, is one of my professors said that um, the great thing about the nonprofit sector is just how many people are involved in it. Um, the nonprofit sector actually employs 10% of the American workforce, which is a, a staggering number compared to uh, when you think of, of all the under, other industries in, in here. Um, so a lot of people are involved in this. So it's really important that I think um, we have a tool um, for people to be, that, that people can use to learn about other nonprofits and that people that are interested in learning more about nonprofits that they may wanna work for um, have something to, to turn to. Um, so I'll go ahead and provide a little bit of a background on how to use the Charity Navigator website. Like Nancy said, I actually use Charity Navigator in my job search in the past, and I, that's, this is actually how I found um, work with Charity Navigator after um, I got into my search. Uh, before this, I was working as a case manager for a nonprofit uh, scholarship program in New York City. Um, and before that, I was really just using a lot of volunteer opportunities and other nonprofits to um, uh, ex develop my experience, um, learn more about the different types of work that are out there, um, and really just ex expand my, my thinking on, on what I could possibly do for the nonprofit sector. Um, all right, so just getting started here. Um, when you land on our Charity Navigator website, it, it could seem a little bit intimidating because um, you really, for someone who wants to go in and is really looking for a specific cause or nonprofit, it might be very easy. We have a search function here in the at the start that will give you an idea of of, of what you want to look for, and we'll give you a, a ton of options once you look for them. So, uh, Philippa, I'm going to use an, an example of of something that you had provided for us when we met in that breakout room for a moment. Um, let me look up food banks um, in the in um in our search uh, function and we'll see what comes up for that. So bear with me. All right, so we've got a couple of food banks here. Um, you'll see we have um, seven results, which I think is it's narrowed because of the way I searched it. So hold on one second. Let's try this a different way. Um, Okay, that's a little better, 679 results. So with this, you'll be able to see all of the charities that we've rated um, under this cause area. Um, you'll see that they're, um, that they're sorted by relevance. So anything that really comes up first 
isn't necessarily based by size or location. So I think it's very important that anyone who's using the site really, um, whether you're looking to support an organization that's local um, and that's close to home for you, uh, take advantage of the, of the filters we have um, on our website. So for example, um, I wanna look up food banks in Connecticut. We'll go ahead and use that uh, to find at least eight food banks in the area that, that I could look to, to support or possibly in a job search, possibly work for if I'm part of the area. Um, we'll go to uh, one of these here. Uh, it gives us some really great information in terms of, of the size of the organization, um, the current rating that we have for it. Um, and let's just go ahead and explore a little bit of what you can find once you click on a charity on our site. So as Nancy mentioned, uh, we have our beacons that will highlight specific um, things in an organization that we really look for when rating them. So if we go here to impact and results, um, you'll be able to see the score that they gain for it. You'll be able to learn more about the impact and results beacon and what we're rating and the metrics and methodology that we use for it. Uh, when you click there, if we go back, we'll see the metrics and the credit that the organization is getting for each credit, uh, for each metric. Um, and you'll also just be able to see some unscored information as well. Um, I find this really helpful to know how much of an organization's um, funding is used for specific programs. So as you can see here, the majority or really almost all of this organization's funding is used for food distribution. Um, and the rest is used for their uh, mobile pantry. Um, we'll go to their accountability and finance metrics next. Um, Nancy mentioned before, uh, we find that it's very important that organizations um, are transparent in, in the information that release or they have available. So a lot of the metrics that we have here um, ask, you know, we try to make sure that they have um, an open policy program. So they have a whistleblower policy, they have a records retention policy, they have they distribute their they file and distribute a 990 um, to stakeholders. Uh, we also have um, we also ask charities um, if they have a donor privacy policy, which is a little specific to Charity Navigator. Um, a lot of organizations um, really depend on uh, the sharing of um, donor lists and registries in order to support themselves um, uh, throughout the year. So while there isn't inherently anything um, bad about that, we want organizations to be clear and disclose that um, somewhere on their site. And if there are some that, that don't do that or, or will state that they won't share any type of donor list, or they won't distribute it or anything, um, make it clear on their site as well. So any organization that, that is open and will say that they won't share any type of donor list, we'll give them full credit for, for having that on the site and, and not doing that. And they need that do depend on that in order to run and function uh, throughout their year. We'll, we'll give them partial credit if they provide uh, users an option to, to, to hold off and opt out of any type of sharing of the list. So that's something that's very particular to Charity Navigator, but we find just as important as being transparent about um, about having, again, that whistleblower policy, the records retention policy, and, and et cetera. Um, we can also go to a culture and community beacon. Um, again, you can learn more about the specific uh, beacon by clicking here, um, and it'll also tell you the, the amount of credit an organization received uh, for the beacon. So it'll, you know, these, this one in itself is something that a charity fills out. Um, and it'll tell you exactly the type of people that they serve, the, the way they, that they use feedback, um, the way that that just basically an organization interacts with their community and within itself. Uh, so that's basically how it works. Let's look at something like a bigger nonprofit. That's something that people might be more familiar with. The American Red Cross is considered one of the super large profit nonprofits in the sector also has um, a lot of information here. Um, they've provided um, all the information that they could in their beacons. 
And it's one of the organizations, one of many that you're able to add um, to your giving basket. So Nancy mentioned this before, our giving basket is a way for organization, for, for users of our site, if they're looking to donate to organizations of a specific cause or, or they want to donate to more than one, more than one, you can simply do so by, by clicking um, on the donate button of a specific charity page and adding it to your giving basket as you would um, adding a, a shirt and a pair of pants as you would in a shopping basket on a, on a retail site. Uh, we want to make sure that any charity that you're interested in, you're passionate about, and you want to support um, is able to receive any type of contribution from a user. So uh, many out there aren't just specifically supporting ch animal charities. Uh, there, there might be uh, interests or values that are aligned here. You want to support women's charities and children's charities and animal charities. Uh, you can do so with the giving basket by putting all of those together, adding them all together and donating to each one um, within one transaction. So we find that this is very helpful for people that are looking to support as many causes as they can. Um, all right, going back real quick to our homepage. If, if, if also you may not know exactly what charity you want to start your search off with, you can simply just click the search button on our site. And I highly recommend this. This is the way I was using the site when I was looking for, for work or seeing what type of charities were out there that really spoke to me and my values. Just, just start a general search from the beginning and start narrowing it from there. Location was very important to me. Um, again, an, an organization's mission and its cause area was very important to me. So if there's anywhere you want to start and you don't know where, I highly encourage doing that as well. Uh, really quickly, um, I'll just go over the advisory system really um, for you all. So if we go to our homepage, head over to Donor Basics, and we go to Avoiding Charity Scams, um, we scroll down here and we take a look at our advisory system. Now this is um, for any charities that um, there may have been any, there may have been some recent developments that that have been, that could be a cause of concern or, or something that we feel users and potential donors should be aware of. Um, and the reasons for those are, are so many. So it, it's hard to say exactly what type of charity could go under the advisory system. But it, it is important to note that these are charities that that have been on the news that that some actions could be questionable. Just something that we just something that we want to make sure that everyone is aware of when when they're looking to donate to, to a particular charity. So let me pull one out. For example, here we'll go to excuse me, we'll go to a moderate advisory charity. Oop, I don't think that's working. I guess not. I think I found something elsewhere. Bear with me one moment. Okay, great. So we'll find this one, the Florida Coalition, Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Um, if you click on a charity that has a low, medium, or high advisory risk, the first thing you'll be greeted with is um, Basically, any recent news reports on, on the charity's recent actions or any legal issues that may have gone through, anything that we worth is, uh, that is newsworthy, uh, we'll bring it right up to you, uh, to users at the forefront. So as you can see here, there are plenty of news articles about um, CEOK, and um, it seems like this might be more of a, a pay scandal type of advisory. So definitely, news worth to know um so important for anyone who's using the site um and you're looking for work um maybe best to really look into charities that are under our advisory system before you consider um you know applying or, or, or learning more about them i think that's priority number one uh if you see that on the page um and then finally um i want to go over um our volunteering page uh before I started working full time in the nonprofit sector, I used a lot of the volunteer opportunities that came to me to really develop and, and build up my skill set um, and learn what type of work I wanted to do in the sector once I was employed full time. There's so many avenues you could take. Um, and I think volunteering is a great way of learning more about what you want and what you're looking for. So if we go, I think I did that too fast. If we go to Donor Basics, head over under Donor Tools to Volunteer Opportunities. Um, you'll see a list similar to our search function, 
this is strictly for volunteer opportunities. So let's say, again, let's use food banks as an example. I want to work at a, I want to volunteer at a food bank. If we just look up food here, uh, narrow our search, uh, we'll see that the list um, of volunteer opportunities at food banks and food pantries is, is available. Um, I live in New Jersey, so I can definitely narrow my search a little more, make sure that the volunteering I'm doing is close to home. Um, and you can just narrow your search a little closer um, to, to what you're looking for. So again, a great chance for you to uh, find volunteer opportunities to help you see exactly what you're looking for. Um, and like I said, build on those skills, see what type of work is out there in the sector um, and, and go from, from there. Um, so that's, that's a lot of what I've been going over. I appreciate everyone's time. Um, does anyone have any questions um, for me? Or... All right, then I guess I'm all set. <laughs> Thanks, Shelby. Great. Thank you, Yesenia. And thank you, Nancy, for showing us how to use Charity Navigator and, and help with uh, job searching in the nonprofit sector. Mm -hmm.